Hello. Welcome. This will be an all levels yoga practice with a focus on the hips. And I think my last hip opening one seemed pretty popular, so I just thought I would do another one. So we will begin as we always do with our centering. So just find a comfortable seat sitting nice and tall. Let's begin to slow down the breathing. Just allowing belly to soften and expand with your inhale. Drawing belly button towards spine with each exhale. Try to breathe through the nose if possible. And perhaps adding in the ujjayi sound to the breath. So create a small constriction in your throat here. Just so that you can hear the breath whispering up and down the throat as you breathe. Take these deep, slow, cleansing breaths. Just take your attention inward. Check in with yourself, see how you feel. This may be different to how you were feeling last week or yesterday. So just work with as you are in this moment. Modify as needed, do what feels right. If you find yourself breathing rapidly or catching your breath, it's probably an indication that you're trying to push yourself a little too hard. So listen to your body throughout the practice. It will tell you what it needs. You'll know what feels right and be okay with that. One more full deep breath. And then just allow your breathing to be natural. And we'll begin the movement today by coming onto the back. So just sit somewhere towards the center of your mat, roll on back. And just draw your knees in. Place your hands on top of your kneecaps and just begin to circle your knees outward. You can make these circles as big or as small as you want, but try not to limit yourself with your hip here. Try to just let your legs be passive and let your hands kind of determine the size of the circle. And at some point, just pause and take those circles in the opposite direction. And then just draw your knees in and pause. Just extend the right leg long. Keep that left leg in. Let's just make some single circles. So just focusing on the one leg. 
Maybe circling in the opposite direction. And then pause, draw your knee in. And just begin to extend and bend the legs. If hamstrings are tight, you're going to keep a fairly generous bend in the knee. Just extend the leg to the point where you feel a good sensation in the hamstring, but you should not be in pain. Go ahead and extend your leg to your own degree and just pause and flex and point your foot. Maybe circling the ankle a few times. And then just taking hold of your leg, either above or below the knee. Just gently ease that leg in a little closer. You'll feel kind of a stopping point when you know that if you went any further, you'd probably start to feel pain. And that's your limit, that's your edge. So just hold at that edge and breathe. If you would like to add a little core work here, you can raise that extended right leg about an inch off the mat. And then on an exhale, begin to peel head, neck and shoulders off the floor, drawing nose toward me. Slowly release back down to the mat. Release your right arm out to shoulder height. And just allow this left leg to open to the side, feeling a little inner thigh stretch here. Perhaps again, flexing and pointing the foot. Circling the ankle. And then drawing your leg back to center, bend your knee and try to grab hold of that instep of the foot or just somewhere on your shin. Coming into kind of a half happy baby. And just kind of maybe play with this leg here, bend and extend. Or just try to draw the knee in a little closer to your armpit and release. Just working into the hip a little bit more. And then letting go of that foot, bend your leg. Place your right hand on your knee, extend left arm to shoulder height. And draw that knee over across and down towards the right. Bringing your toe down to the floor, but keep the knee at hip height. And just keep your gaze straight up at the ceiling. We'll just take a few breaths here in this spinal twist. We're still pretty early on in the practice. We're not very warmed up. So you don't want to twist the spine too much. Let's take one more breath here. Then roll on to your back. Draw both knees in, maybe circling both knees now in the same direction. Just massaging the low back. And then taking those circles in the other direction. And then just extend your left leg long, keep the right leg drawn in. Release left arm to your side. Just work into that right hip a little bit more with some hip circles. Okay, and just try to keep the leg passive. Use your hand to determine the size of the circles. And then just drawing that knee in. To extend and bend your leg, working into the hamstring. Again, as always, if hamstrings are tight, you know your own body. Just extend the leg as far as you can. Everybody is different. And be okay with where you are. This is your own personal yoga practice. 
Extend the leg and pause, maybe flexing and pointing the foot. Maybe circling the ankle. And then just pausing, grab hold of your leg. Just avoid grabbing on the back of the knee. And just work into that hamstring stretch. Feel free to stay here. Or maybe bring the left leg up off the mat and begin to raise up your head, neck and shoulders, bringing nose toward me, adding a little core. Taking one more breath here. Begin to lower. Bring left arm out to shoulder height. And just allow that right leg to fall open to the right side, feeling that inner thigh stretch. Again, maybe flexing and pointing the foot or circling the ankle. And then bringing that leg to center, bending your knee, maybe grabbing hold of your instep. This left leg here can be bent with your foot flat on the floor if that makes it easier. And then maybe extend and bend that leg or perhaps just rock it out and in a little bit. So this one-legged happy baby. If you did bend this left leg, go ahead and extend it, bend your right knee. Right arm goes out to shoulder height. Left hand will guide this leg over, across and down to the left, bringing foot down to mat, keeping knee and hip at the same height and gaze is straight up towards the ceiling. Gradually roll on to your back here. Gather your knees in once more. We'll be coming up to a seated position. So you can either choose to rock back and forth, gain a little momentum and sit up, or maybe just roll on to one side and kind of push yourself up that way. So we'll be coming into bound angle. So kind of nestle yourself on your sit bones, those two kind of knobby little bones you feel here at the base of the pelvis. And so you'll be leaning forward slightly and try to maintain a straight spine. If you're really flexy in the hips, you can probably bring your heels in very close and still maintain a straight spine. If that's a little harder for you, just push your feet out a little more until it's comfortable for you to Achieve a straight, long spine. Just take a few breaths here. And whenever you're ready, you can begin to round the spine, taking your head down towards the earth. Another option here is to push the feet fairly far forward and come into turtle. So you would take your hands, palms down and thread them under your legs so your forearms are on the floor. Also an option is to kind of bring your hands on top of the insteps of your feet. And just allow the spine to round and breathe.
Take one more breath here. If you were in turtle, just release the arms and then begin to come up again to a nice tall spine. Take your hands behind you. Fingers can point in whatever direction is comfortable. Draw your shoulder blades in and open up the chest for seated fish. You can choose to look up or keep the gaze straight ahead. Allowing that chest to expand as you inhale. Taking one more breath. Release the shoulder blades. We'll make our way onto hands and knees, finding a tabletop position. Just making sure joints are stacked. Wrists, elbows, shoulders, knees and hips. Just moving into some cat dog on your inhale, belly lowers. Tailbone and chin tip up. And as you exhale, arching the back, drawing in the core, tucking in chin and tailbone. And just working back and forth with the rhythm of your own breath, a nice slow flow from one posture to the next. If a particular posture just feels really good in your body right now, Feel free to pause. Enjoy that posture for a few breaths. Take one more inhale breath. Exhale, really rounding the spine. And then coming to neutral. We'll be doing some donkey kicks just to warm things up a little bit. So lean slightly over onto your right side here. And on your inhale, you'll draw the knee towards nose. And with an exhale, you push the heel back with a kind of a forceful exhale breath. I want you to flex the foot and push back through the heel. And just keep your leg, make sure it only comes to about hip height and avoid flinging the head there. So whenever you're ready, at your own pace. Three more. And then just pause with your heel extended out back, perhaps raising up opposite arm to shoulder height, adding a little balance. And then slowly lower your arm, begin to cross that leg over towards the right, bringing the ball of the foot or the top of the foot down to the mat. And then just create a little curve in your spine by turning to look back at that foot. So your hips and your chin are going to the same side, the right side. Creating a little C curve in the spine. Slowly release, coming back to neutral. And then we'll work with those donkey kicks on the other side. So just lean slightly onto your left side. On your inhale, draw that right knee in. Exhale, push back through the heel with a sound. Three more. Pause right here with leg extended. Option to extend opposite arm to shoulder height, reaching forward through the fingertips. Core is engaged, 
Belly button is pulling up and in towards your spine. And slowly lower your arm if it was raised. And then cross your foot behind you towards the left. And turn your gaze to the same side and look back towards that hip or foot. Breathing into that spinal curvature we've created, allowing ribs on the right side to expand. And then release your foot coming back to a tabletop. Take your hands a little forward of your shoulders here. Root the hands down into the mat and hold them there as you sink the hips back, coming into child's pose. And resting your forehead on the mat if that's comfortable, otherwise just make a fist with one of your hands. And rest your head on your fist, or just stack both palms and rest your head on your hands. Find your version of child's pose. And just breathe slowly, enjoying this resting posture. Slowly making your way back onto hands and knees here, hooking the toes, preparing for down the facing dog. So begin to raise your hips up, push your heels towards the mat, push into the palms of your hands, pushing chest back towards thighs. Try to keep your head in line with your arms here. Tip your tailbone up and back. It's a slight movement. And also think about drawing your shoulder blades down your back and then kind of wrapping them forward. This will kind of turn your armpits ahead towards one another. This all just helps to support the spine as we hold this down with dog. So I'm going to offer up some hip openers while we hold down with facing dog. Just an option, and if, if at any point you feel you need a break, just come down onto the knees and go back into child's pose for a breath or two. So we're coming into three-legged dog, so keeping the right foot grounded, just lift your left leg in back, pointing that foot, lifting the leg straight up. And then begin to bend the knee, drawing heel towards glutes. Now from here, I'm going to offer up two options. One option is to actually just begin some kind of fire hydrant type moves here, circling the hip, making some circles in one direction, and then at some point switching and going in the opposite direction. Or you can keep your heel drawn in towards your glutes and just begin to stack your hips, opening the hips. So your hips are stacked one on top of the other and you're looking out on the, your left arm. And here you can choose to straighten and bend the leg or just hold the posture. So whether you're circling the hips, whether you're holding a regular downward dog or whether you're stacking your hips, just try to take one or two more breaths. And then straighten up your hips, extend the leg up for three-legged dog. Bring leg down to mat, maybe walk the dog. If you need a break here, knees come down. Sink your hips back into child's pose, maybe releasing your arms behind you, allowing shoulders to drape forward. Just giving the arms a nice break here. Taking one more breath. Remembering you always have the option to come back to this posture right here. 
Let's make our way back up into downward facing dog. And once you kind of set up that downward dog, just elevate the right leg behind you. Begin to bend the leg, drawing heel towards glute. Again, your options are to do some hip circles here, going in one direction for maybe four or five circles and then switching directions. Or just stacking your hips, opening up the hips and looking out under that right armpit, perhaps bending and straightening the leg. Taking one more breath here. Level up the hips if they were stacked. Extend that leg straight up. Slowly lower the foot. Let's take a moment here to kind of walk the dog and then we'll begin to walk the feet forward, landing in a forward fold. If you have high blood pressure, glaucoma, sinus issues, maybe you don't want to fold this far forward. Your option is right here in jackknife, keeping head and heart at the same level. We will join you there in a moment anyway, so no worries. If you are folded forward, perhaps coming into ragdoll. Just allowing the head and neck to hang loose and Sway back and forth, side to side. Knees are soft. And then bringing hands to shins or thighs on an inhale. Make your way halfway up, finding that jackknife posture. Draw shoulder blades back to pull shoulders away from ears. Most of the weight is in your heels. Knees are soft. Crown of head is pointing forward. Take one more breath here. Just briefly fold forward on your exhale. And then as you inhale, pushing into your feet, sweeping arms out and up, making your way to standing, landing in mountain pose. Feet are parallel, about hip width apart. Leg muscles are engaged. There's a little tilt to the pelvis. Shoulders are back, standing nice and tall in this strong mountain pose, pressing palms together. Just lowering your arms. We'll just work into some sun breaths here. Inhaling. Reaching up, bringing palms together. Exhale, turn palms out and push your arms down. Inhale, reaching up to extended mountain. Exhale, lower, creating a little bit of a resistance here with your own arms. Adding on half sun salutation so inhale reach up with soft knees exhale dive forward inhale halfway finding jackknife exhale fold inhale sweeping arms out and up exhale hands to heart let's just do a couple more of these Exhale, dive forward. Find that jackknife on an inhale. Exhale, fold. Making your way to extended mountain. Bringing hands to heart. One more round. you finish just pause with hands to heart center
and releasing the hands. We'll be coming into the short balance sequence. So just root that left leg into the ground, keep the knee slightly soft. Now, if you're not comfortable with balance, please just keep your toe close to the floor. If you're okay with balance, we're just gonna begin by clasping the fingers just below the knee and kind of hugging the knee in just a little bit here. Again, stretching out that hip, the low back. And then release your leg, bringing knee um, approximately level with your hip. Flex your foot so heel is up. Just take a breath or two here. And then bringing right hand to knee, just guide your knee out to the side. At any time you need to touch the toe down, just let it, let your leg go and touch the toe down. For a little more challenge, only an option, I'm gonna turn your gaze to the left side. And then slowly, Bring your gaze forward, <laughs> bring this knee in, perhaps hug it to your chest one more time. And then if you can, just extend that leg out on an inhale, exhale lower. Oh, we're getting a round of applause for that, thank you so much. <laughs> Maybe just take your feet a little wider than hip width and we'll just do a few circles here with the hips. And then just kind of go in the opposite direction. Yeah, and then rooting that right foot down, remembering you can always just keep the toe here and work with the posture with the toe close to the ground. If you're comfortable, just draw this leg off. Just pull the knee in towards your chest. Just try to keep the back upright. Avoid leaning forward here. Just letting go of the knee, bringing knee to hip height, flexing your foot. You've kind of got two right angles here with your legs. And then just begin to draw this left leg out. Belly button is pulled towards spine, core is tight. Try to focus on something that's not moving. And now that I've said that, if you would like more challenge, you can turn your head, looking out towards the right. And then bring your gaze back to the front. Bring this leg back to the front if you can, maybe hugging the knee one more time. Then extending the leg out front on an inhale. Exhale low. Shake your legs out. And then find a wide stance on your mat. We'll be coming into a squat. So just begin to sink down into the hips here as low as you want. You can keep hands on your thighs or perhaps bring elbows down to thighs. And we'll just add a little movement here. Make this squat a little mobile. So again, just kind of working into the hips. And feel free to stay here in one of these two options, maybe even coming in and out of the squat if legs need a break. One more option is to bring your feet a little closer together. Sink down and just come into a full squat here. Bringing elbows to the thighs, bringing palms together, kind of pushing your knees up. You will be leaning slightly forward but try to keep the spine straight. Avoid rounding the back and hunching over. Your heels can be up or if your feet are a little wider apart, maybe your heels are down. However, you are more comfortable. Okay, you can rock side to side or maybe even release the hands and rotate side to side if that feels okay. Take one more breath and then we'll begin to straighten up the legs, coming to a 
Standing position again, maybe you want to shake out your legs. We'll work through some standing postures. We're only going to do two or three postures, but we'll take them from side to side a couple times. So find a fairly wide stance. Your toes are facing forward. Keeping the right toes where they are. Turn your left toes over to the left. Begin to bend this front knee. Now, if you notice that your knee extends beyond the toes, just step a little bit wider. Bringing arms to shoulder height. Finding warrior two. You can gaze straight forward or look out towards this left hand. And from here, just straighten your front knee. Begin to lean forward as if you're reaching across a countertop. And when you can't go any further, just windmill your arms. And what you want to avoid here is dropping this top shoulder, the right shoulder forward. You don't want to be leaning down like this. Some people like to do that so they can get their fingertips down. It's more important to stay open and have correct alignment than it is to force your fingertips down to the floor. So your hand can be on the floor, and that'd be great. Or maybe just to the inside of your shin, or maybe you're resting on your shin. From here, just come back up, finding warrior two. And then straightening your leg, turning your feet towards the corners of your mat, just come into a squat. And then turning left toes forward, right toes out, back leg is straight, front knee is bent, finding warrior two to the other side. Stay here for a couple of breaths. And then straightening your front leg. Leaning like you're reaching across a countertop. Then windmill your arms. Finding your version of triangle. Front knee can be soft and bent. This top shoulder should be open and back. Gaze can be up straight ahead or down, however you are most comfortable. And just coming on back up, sinking down into warrior two. And releasing that, bring hands to heart, toes point towards the corners of your mat. We're in a squat. And then releasing Right toes forward, left toes to the left, finding warrior two once more. Straightening that leg, reaching, making your way to triangle. Using that back arm to pull you up, back to warrior two. And then finding that warrior squat or goddess. Turning your toes, finding warrior two to the right. Straightening your front legs, making your way to triangle. Coming back up, finding warrior two. And then finding that squat, toes pointing out towards corners of the mat. And then straightening your legs, turn your toes to face front. We'll be coming into a wide angle forward fold, keeping knees soft begin to come forward here and you can pause parallel to the earth with hands on your thighs if you can you can reach down bringing fingertips down to the floor and then maybe rock back and forth here 
This is where a yoga block could really help. You would just place it here and have your fingertips on the block. And we'll be adding a twist. So twist can be done from any variation here. If you remain parallel to the ground, just take your right hand to the outside of your left leg. Try to keep hips parallel with the ground and just open that left arm for a twist. If your fingertips are touching the floor, you have a couple options here. You can bring your right arm to center, open your left arm, or you can walk that right arm towards the left ankle and then find your twist. The most important thing, whichever option you pick, is keep your hips parallel to the earth so you are twisting from the waist up and the spine should be straight. You don't want to twist from a rounded spine. So pick whichever option will allow you to keep hips level and spine straight. Just releasing the twist, enjoy that forward fold for a breath or two. And then find your version of the twist on the opposite side. Try to mirror what you did on the first side just to keep everything even. to make your way upright. Bring your arms out, hip palms forward, fingers spread wide, shining in five pointed star. And then sinking the knees down, making these goalpost arms coming into one more squat or goddess pose. Take a big breath here. On your next inhale, reach up tall. Exhale, allow arms to come down. And we'll make our way towards the front of the mat. We'll be going into pigeon. So inhale, reaching the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. And just step back, finding downward dog. Keeping right foot grounded, raising left leg up. And then on an exhale, bring knee to nose, maybe hover for a second and then release that leg down. Releasing your heel to the inside of your thigh, extending right leg back. If you know pigeon is not for you and you prefer to do figure four stretch on your back, that looks like this. Just make sure that you do one side, then the other side. And we will be coming onto our back after pigeon. So we will just join you there. So take a breath here. And then slowly begin to fold forward. And make your head rest on something. So if it doesn't rest comfortably on the mat, you can stack your forearms or stack your fists. So you pick, just make sure that head is resting comfortably, neck is comfortable. Breathing into that sensation you feel in this left hip. Slowly making your way upright. If you are on your back, 
Just release your legs, maybe windshield wipe your knees from side to side. Just remember which side you strap. If you're with me in pitching, you should be getting a pretty good stretch right now in the right hip flexor muscle. Bringing palms to the floor, hooking those right toes, finding downward dog, maybe taking a moment here just to walk the dog, stretch out the legs. And then keeping left leg grounded. Let's bring right leg up to three-legged dog. Inhale, breath on an exhale, draw knee towards nose, hover, hover, and then release that leg, bringing foot to the inside of the thigh, coming up nice and tall here, feeling a stretch in this psoas muscle, the hip flexor on the left, and then exhale, forward and forward, feeling that stretch now coming into the right glute hip area. Take one more breath in. And then as you inhale, begin to slowly make your way upright. If you're on your back, just release your legs, bring your feet down to the floor. Slowly sit on to this right hip. And swing the left leg around. Just make sure there's enough mat behind you that you can roll back here. And just slowly roll on back. And just draw your knees in, extend your legs up. Maybe just take a moment to flex and point the feet. We'll be coming into Happy Baby. So bending the knees, grabbing either for your insteps, your shins, or just Resting forearms on backs of thighs and interlacing your fingers. I'm just going to draw those knees down towards your armpits again, feeling the hips open, breathing into that hip area, encouraging it to relax, release. And perhaps beginning to rock here from side to side, up to you how far you go. You can even rock all the way onto one side and the other if you're comfortable with that. I promise you won't get stuck. <laughs> one more option here is to just bend and straighten the legs, kind of working into the hamstrings a little bit more as we stretch the hips. So just listen to your body. Give it what it's asking for. Gradually letting go of your feet, bending your knees, and just doing a few circles here again with the knees, taking both knees in one direction, and then just pausing, circling in the opposite direction, and extending your legs long, maybe take a quick full body stretch here. Tuck the chin, feel that stretch down the spine, or up the back of the neck, perhaps flexing your cheek. Take an inhale breath, and as you exhale, just draw your left knee in and hug it towards your chest. And release your left arm to shoulder height, and just guide this knee over, across and down to the right, as we did in the beginning of class. So if you have more flexibility in the low back, you do have the option here 
to keep your right hand on your knee and just work your way a little deeper into the twist. If you feel any tightness at all in the low back, just back off and keep your knee and hip at the same height. Take one more breath here. And then slowly make your way onto your back. Maybe placing feet flat on the mat. And just kind of allowing knees to rock gently from side to side. Extending left leg long, just draw right knee in and hug it towards your chest. And take right arm to shoulder height. And just draw your left, your right knee over, across and down to the left. Again, just pay attention to that low back area. If it feels tight at all, make sure the toe is on the floor, but your knee and hip are at the same level. But if you are flexible in the spine, in the lower back, just begin to draw this knee closer to the floor. One more breath. And slowly roll on to your back. Maybe just drawing your knees in one more time. Give them a hug. Maybe rock gently from side to side. And just bring your feet down to mat. Bring the soles of your feet together. And allow your knees to open up to the side for reclining bound angle. Maybe tucking your shoulder blades in. And perhaps just resting hands on your belly. Just feeling the rise and fall of the belly as you breathe, letting gravity work on opening your legs, your hips. If you are comfortable here, feel free to stay in reclining bound angle for Shavasana. 
Otherwise, bending your knees, drawing your knees in, bring your feet flat on the mat. Just allow your knees to kind of roll in and support one another. This will give the low back some support. Or perhaps extending your legs long. Arms by your side, just allowing arms and legs to roll out to the side. Or perhaps you prefer to roll onto one side. So just find that comfortable position where you know you can let go and fully relax. Take a mental inventory of your body. See how you feel. Hopefully a little more relaxed than at the beginning of class. Just note any areas where you may still be hanging on to some tension and just try to let it go. Try to release the tension. Let your shoulders sink into the mat. Perhaps just gently Move the head side to side till you find a comfortable place just to rest the head and neck. Take an inhale breath and as you exhale, just sink into the support of the earth. Let it hold you up. Let your arms be heavy, let your legs feel heavy the weight of your bones, just pressing into the floor, muscles are soft, jaw is relaxed, eyes are soft, just feel tension melt away, just breathe naturally and allow the mind to wander but try not to focus on any thoughts that inevitably will come to your mind, just try to let them pass. Picture them as clouds floating by on a breezy day. Begin to make some small movements, bringing your attention back to the present moment. Just taking in the sounds around you, noting how the air feels on your skin. And 
perhaps rolling on to one side. Taking a few breaths there. And then taking your time whenever you're ready. Just make your way to a seated position. And then opening your eyes if they're still closed. Inhale, breath, reaching arms out and up, pressing palms together, and drawing hands down to heart center. Thank you for sharing this practice with me today. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.